Welcome back. It's the Will and Jack show, and we're going to start off by talking a little bit about democracy. Yes, and uh, we've, we've just had some great guests on the show today, and it just folds right into what we want to talk about here. So the main thing that I, as a, uh, a new Canadian and member of Canadian society and somebody who's uh, been on this show now for seven years wow. and learning about, learning about how society functions here, and of course, I've lived in a lot of different places, and I, you know, the one thing I notice is that the places where I have lived, they functioned before I got there, and they function now that I'm gone. And so I have no doubt that Canada is going to continue to function. But I also uh, have noticed that here, that we don't really live in a democracy, and I can really easily demonstrate it just from the stuff that we've talked about on the show. In the first place, it's not the job of the police to teach people how to commit crimes and, and, oh, to, yes. and to try to get them to kill people. Yes. That's, I mean, that whole thing about the RCMP and the, and the bombing at the legislature, people don't know that that even happened. Yeah. That's not a democratic, that was not a democratic process. If you polled voters, would you like the police to spend millions of dollars teaching people how to commit crimes? I'm sure that they would disagree, they would not agree with that. So, and those people are not elected. So what we have here is a case where we're in a society where th basic things are not decided by the electorate. So that's not really a democratic thing. And then the other thing is we had Medi showing about uh, reading an advertisement of how, uh, I, I think it was in the education department, wasn't it, where uh, people were being, somebody needed, they needed a leader who could cause a crisis to create change. Oh, right. This was, and, th uh, these are the hiring requirements. Yeah, so, so I mean, that's, BC's, that's not democratic. The British Columbia Civil Service. And, and, then, yeah. and then I just read this thing in the BCC, uh, the BCCLA, the, the Civil, Civil Liberties, Liberties Association. And uh, they got a heavily redacted, they got some documents from, I think it's from CSIS and the RCMP, but they, they've evidently, they've, they've turned over the names of nonviolent protesters right. to corporations. So what that tells us is we, we, are, we live in a state that's run by corporations. And there's nothing wrong with that. That's just the way the system works, and we all accept it. We all live in that, and, and we're happy when new things come out. Everybody's happy in general that 5G is rolling out, and we're going to be able to download apps 100 times faster on our, on our smartphones. I, I'm not happy. I don't have a smartphone, so I don't care. But I'm just telling you that the process evidently, and I have seen this, is that in corporate boardrooms, things are decided, and then they're presented, and they become law, and they become accepted. So really, the people we're electing are merely cheerleaders. And we get to be told what was decided in Ottawa and in corporate boardrooms. I, I, don't, I, I can't participate in that system. I, I don't believe in it. I don't believe that my vote counts. And so I'm going to change what I do. And I'm, I'm happy that I've been on this show, but I don't want to, to keep people thinking that just by voting differently, something is going to change, because it isn't. It isn't going to change. Things are, things are going to change when people's hearts change. And I, I read a section from this, this book called And They Knew Each Other about how when we connect our heart chakra to our base chakra and our, our uh, mind, our brain, <laughs> Then, then we will begin to be able to do things as humans and not because of, of laws, and we, we will have a heart. And now I'm reading another book by the same author called Terra Nova, A Global Revolution and the Healing of Love. And I'd just like to read this one thing. If we are to, this is a quote from biologist Lynn Margulis, and she says, if we are to survive the ecological and social crisis we have caused, we may be forced into dramatically new kinds of cooperative ventures. And just what one of the guests was talking about. Community is not just a sentimental dream of young people, but the next stage of evolution. The people of the future will live in community. So, so we're looking at, at living in community and we're looking at being more connected. I don't know about you, but I live in an apartment where if I'm unlocking my door and I look over and I see my neighbor, they, they look away. They don't want to make contact with me. That's not living in community. Living in community is when you look people in the eye and you don't lie to them. So the, the, the whole age that we live in is an age of, of deception. 
And that's, that's the, the main thing that we have to get over, is this deception that we live in. Everybody's lying to everybody else. We paint ourselves, we make ourselves look, uh, you know, it's a lie. So, but that's what, we're, that's what we want, right? That's the value, is the appearance. So I'm shifting my, um, my focus to, uh, I'm, I'm building this machine. I started noticing about uh, 15 years ago, you can just take a, a zoom here and I'll just show you. I, built, I started writing computer generated music and um, I use several different uh, oscillators and sounds. I use one for each chakra and I use, uh, I use some very sl uh, slow, these are sub-audible sounds, they're all based on the earth frequency, the, the resonance of the earth at eight hertz, the Schumann resonance it's called. So all of my frequencies are different from regular music and the music acts on the body. And what I think it does is just what this, is, this book is talking about. It, it connects us closer to each other. When I give a concert, people can feel the energy. And I, I, for a long time, I didn't want to talk about it because it's, it's woo-woo. If you notice, no politician, no uh, corporate executive ever talks about anything that, about life force energy. In fact, you're considered to be a nutter if you, if you talk about life force energy. But since I've been doing these experiments on myself and feeling it so clearly, I know it's true. And I read John Lilly's autobiography, and he says that when, since we don't have instruments, we don't have scientific instruments that can detect this, but our body can, then we need to listen to our bodies. So, so that's what I'm doing with this. I'm learning to listen to my body, and I'm learning to teach uh, other people how to listen to their bodies, because that's what we have to do. We have to connect to each other, and we have to live in community, not just in community with you and me and in killing everything else to, in order for us to live, but we have to live in community with the planet and the, uh, the other animals and, and plants that live here. So, so my focus, I, again, I'll just reiterate this, it's, we have to become independent of the system and grow our own food in community. We can't, we're not, we're not independent individuals that just need to go buy a gun and, and 100 acres and go live on a farm somewhere. We have to be in community. That's the only way we're going to survive and clean up the planet. So that's my big shift. That's, that's what I'm, I'm uh, all about now. And I, I, I want to thank you so much for having me to work on this show because I've had to work on this show so hard and try to understand what everybody's saying. And I see that everybody really is saying pretty much the same thing. They're all identifying these things. Yeah, we've got this system, but hey, wait a minute. What about this over here? And, and, and we've got to start uh, doing something about it, not just identifying it, but actually living our lives. We can't just say, oh, yeah, pollution's bad, and then jump in our Cadillac. I mean, it just doesn't work anymore. We can't do that anymore. Big changes are coming, that's for sure. So the things that were on this show, I mean, we, we have uh, just this, this uh, the, the community, living in community. You heard um, Georgita. Yes. And that was beautiful, wasn't it? She's, she's uh, been helping people her life. That's been her job. And now she's finding out how beautiful it is to live in, in community. Yeah, I was surprised at how, you know, from her description of it, how well they seem able to make decisions. It's very heartening to know that a group of people can get together. They and talk about that here too. In 40 years they've been living in community and it's difficult at first because you're not used to, it's not like a family, it's different. It's a, it, there's this respect. And, and the other thing, respect. this respect is an important thing. I was in the Soyos and I went, it's, a, it's a, the, uh, the uh, what is it, Incaneep? Inc 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 the, the band is okay, Inconi. Okay. And uh, so we went to their cultural center and they have these beautiful vineyards that they're growing. And they had a, a, a film that they had made, the band had made, and, and a young person had said, we're taught that we don't own this land. We, we own the land, but we don't own it. We can't do anything we want to it. We, it's, it's in trust for our, our children and our, our grandchildren. That's a beautiful way to look at it. Instead of, we can do, we own this land. Now we can frack it. We can do anything we want to it because we bought it. We yeah. paid for it. And then we can just what leave. What a crazy idea. It's right? a, it just makes you think, why, why aren't we paying attention to what these people are saying? Because they're making a whole lot more sense than the people who are elected who can't even see that, you know, I mean, the, the money laundering thing, that was a big one for me, is to, 
the, to have somebody in the BC government find out from a study that was done in a university in Australia about the Vancouver model of money laundering. It's like, see, you know, the, the see no evil, hear no evil, speak no evil. That's, what we're, that's our government system. Yeah. It's remarkable. I think it's remarkable to many Canadians how the depth of the corruption in our society and you know, our government leaders are pretending that they're going to look into it. They're not going to look into it. They are it. They are, and yeah. if we can't get rid of them and replace them with some kind of democratic form of government, and as our previous guests were saying, a free press, then uh, we can see the direction we're being taken in, and it's not pretty. So I, I'm, I'm uh, working on this, and it, it probably just sounds like I'm a nutter, you know, to have to, to be working with sound and, and expect it to do something. I'm not going to, uh, I want to make sound, and I think that's going to change the planet. But from what I've understood about what this is doing, it's resonating my body with the planet. I can feel things, I can feel people more, and I just think that, it, you know, if we could feel each other, we wouldn't be able to kill each other. You can't kill somebody if you know them. Unless you, I mean, it's just the way the way we do things now. I was just, I, I've just been reading so many different things on on this, uh, on how our system works with this lens of of how we need to be in, more in community. We may need to be connected to each other, and that seems to me so patently obvious now that that is a huge, huge problem. This disconnection from each other and from the planet. How else can we go on destroying the place? and just not see it. And you know, you mentioned the word respect earlier, and I've been thinking about that too, because it's almost as if in our society, we're taught not to respect anybody or anything. Just do what you want, and that's great. Well, you know, that isn't really the way the world works. No, with finite resources, we can't yeah. do that anymore. Yeah. I think yeah. the, the whole assumption, where we, what we are doing now got us to where we are. The, in, the, indivi the rugged individualist and capitalism and all this other stuff. It got us to where we are. We've learned that. Now let's move on to something else. <laughs> so I don't think the change is going to come through uh, politics. I think it, each individual has to work on themselves and, and become more conscious. So that's what I'm going to work on. Sounds good to me. Thanks, Jack. Okay. Thank you, Will. And thank you for watching this week's Citizens Forum.